<laughs> How you doing YouTube Jackknife here. So today we're gonna work on the S2000 a little bit. I got a 2003 Honda S2000 here in which we are going to do a intake swap on. So we are going to swap the LS1 intake with the LS6. Yes, that is right. This is not the stock Honda F20 or F22 motor. It has a LSX motor in it, which is actually a LQ9. So, without further ado, let's get started. That if I'm having trouble taking the dim oil cap off already, geez. All right. All right, so I am taking off a bolt that is going to be holding on the fuel rail. So that run right there is a 10 mil, and here we go. Here's the other 10 mil. All right, so it should just be two bolts, I believe, that hold the fuel rail on each side. All right. Next 10 millimeter bolt, right there, right here. So you got a total of four holding on the stock LS1 intake uh, fuel rail. All right, that guy's loose. I'm sure clearly everybody knows that since this is a V8 application, you have one injector per cylinder head. So obviously since this is a V8, we've got a total of eight injectors. That means eight injectors that are going to leak a little bit of gas when you take these off. There's a lot of different ways you can do this. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to unplug all of my injectors from the LS1 intake, kind of put them to the side a little bit, because I don't feel like unplugging them from the harness. A lot of these times these LS series motors have these funny looking little clips, and the last thing I want to do is lose one of those guys because they can certainly go flying. So kind of get those guys out of the way, get anything else I have out of the way. So I'm going to give you guys a little closer look here. So we have the LS1 intake with the holes for the injectors here. One, two, three, four on each side. We got the, I guess, the bolt there that holds the fuel rail on that connect to these tabs here. One, two, three, and four. All right, so now I'm going to take these injectors out. One, two, three, and four kind of push them to the side a little bit so I have room to get this intake manifold off. Make sure you don't lose your O-rings. It's going to be O-rings on both sides of the injector here. One there, one there. Just kind of move this stuff out of the way. Alright, I got some intake hoses here. 
Let's see if I can get this off one handed without busting my knuckles up. There we go. I'll get that one out in a second. All right, let me put you back on the car. The big thing to remember here is a lot of the LS throttle bodies, actually I think almost all of them, have a recirculating uh, radiator hose. So a lot of LS guys have figured out different ways and basically what and where to do with this. So unfortunately all that I've read is you cannot cap this off for any reason. Um, you need to recirculate it into your coolant system somehow. So what I've done for the time being, still trying to figure out whether or not it works, is I've recirculated this basically into my top radiator hose right under my radiator cap. So that's what I'm doing for the time being to see if it works out. Still doing a little bit of trial and error with it. But uh, I know a lot of the guys, they take this and they recircuit into the, uh, the water pump. The drill and tap a hole somewhere in here and that works real well. Uh, I did not want to do that to my Mesere water pump since that sucker's like $750, $800. So I wanted to do it to something a little cheaper, which was like a little $50, 16 and uh, inline radiator cap. So that's what I decided to do. All right, so now we have a bunch of 8 millimeter bolts up here that actually hold the intake down to the heads. Uh, we got one, two, three, four, five. Looks like five on each side, total of ten. So I'm going to go ahead and get my, my light DeWalt impact and take these uh, guys off real quick. All right, once I do that, I'll be able to move it forward a little bit, and I'll be able to get to the back of the intake manifold and deal with this mess of wires and such. You see there's my sensor there. So... Alrighty, let's see what we got now. Give you a little bit different of an angle. This one will give me a little bit of a... Alright. There we go. Alright, so this should be free for the most part, I believe. See what we got, see if we can kind of shimmy it up a little further. Take these bolts out, and make it a lot easier. So they're not catching on anything. 
it when we take it out. Here we go. So, in the back here of the intake manifold is that very delicate bracket that I was mentioning to you about. So on the back, ooh, <laughs> all right, word to the wise. the hood falls, make sure you're not in harm's way. All right, anyway. So on the back of the intake manifold, there is that sensor that we looked at earlier, one of which goes to the brake booster and one of which goes to specifically one of my vacuum sources. The big thing to do here is make sure when you take these off, you're not breaking anything. So took the vacuum source off and now I got to try to figure out a safe way to get the let me see let's take a look at the elastic manifold I think these twist out yeah, I don't want to fool with it Alrighty, so continuing on here, the front of the throttle body is going to have a few connectors that we need to make sure we undo, some throttle position sensors and such. So we're going to get rid of both those there so they're not connected onto anything. As you can see, the intake's starting to be pretty loose. So what I'm going to try to do here is I need to get off my brake booster uh, line or source line right there. So I'm going to try to flip the manifold vertically I guess so that I can get some pliers in there and try to try to take that off so let's see how that goes hopefully it'll go well all right to give you all a little bit what I'm having a little trouble with for the slight moment trying to get this brake booster tube off the back of my intake manifold so a little bit of twisting and prying and making sure that this thing doesn't break is what needs to happen but this is definitely the piece you got to be very cautious about. All right, so here is the LS1 intake manifold that has the new gaskets on it. You can tell that these are newer because you can definitely see that they are raised up off of the manifold. Um, you can look over here on this LS6 intake and you can see how flat and squished these are. So since I'm going to be pushing roughly, oh, I don't know, anywhere from eight to 15 pounds of boost. I wanna put something on there that's gonna hold the power a little bit better. So we're just gonna kind of go through the process of how to take these bad guys off and how to reinstall them. All right. So what I have here uh, to help get these off a little bit is I just have a, a pick that I got at the hardware store. Nothing too crazy. Um, something that'll be able to kind of get in those grooves, get those uh, gaskets up. So I'm going to go through and take these bad boys off. This LS6 intake manifold, it should be a lot easier to take these gaskets off since they're uh, brand new, less than a thousand miles on them. So I shouldn't have much problem at all. You can definitely see what kind of shape this LS6, LS1 manifold is in. You can see how, I guess, at some point in time, someone busted up the manifold pretty bad. So I wouldn't be surprised if I was losing some boost pressure uh, through some of those little cracks or divots. So hopefully the gaskets would have prevented that, but I mean, I mean, look how bad that one is. That's completely gone over there. So someone definitely had a good old fashioned time with this intake. I mean, hell, look at this here. Now another one almost completely busted. That plastic right there. Look, we got another one right here that's busted. 
So say looking at all of these intake ports, you got one that's bowed, one that's busted, one that's busted. That one kind of feels a little bowed. Got another one that's busted there, possibly bowed. That one's kind of flat, and that one's completely broken off. So definitely a good upgrade to do. All right, one thing you gentlemen always want to check is before you start your vehicle, you want to make sure there's no leaks in the fuel rail. So you can see the leaking from this right here. Before you start your car and you start driving off, make sure your fuel rails are not leaking in any way, shape, or form. So out of all eight, I got one that's starting to leak a little bit. So what I'm going to do is end up losing the fuel rail again, readjusting it, and see what I can do from there. Alrighty, I am all done switching the intake manifold over. Let's see if this sucker starts. Success!